Joining me now to discuss is Christian Whiten, former State Department senior advisor. You should, we should all say Putin from now on, I think, rather than Putin. Um, <laughs> U.S. Okay. Cyber Command is an incredible organization that a lot of Americans don't know about, and they're, they're okay with that because they, like, they do a lot of their stuff in secret. But they did come out publicly and admit that they had two counterattacks during the Trump administration, one in 2018 and one in 2020, both of them to counterattack the Russian efforts to attack our electoral systems. Is there any indication that there have been any counterattacks of any kind during the Biden administration? No, there haven't been, and, and this is something that usually leaks out. It's 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 not something. Even if you attack a military installation, and the U.S. US in the past has been involved in attacks on Iranian installations related to their nuclear program, usually that information leaks out. So it's extremely unlikely that we have done this. And you know, twice now, President Biden or his top aides have drawn lines in the sand and said, you know, if you do this, we're going to counterattack. And so far, twice there has been no counterattack. First with solar wind which was believed to be a Russian hack that was conducted in the Trump administration. But Biden officials said, well, if we find out for sure it was Russia, we're going to do something. We're going to do things that were seen and unseen. Uh, and they were so unseen that nothing ever seemingly happened. And once again, you know, you have Biden giving Putin and Putin a list of 16 <laughs> uh, areas he can't target. And that, that seems to have had no effect. Right. Now, you know the State Department very well. You know that the State Department was not happy with Donald Trump because he was a against a lot of these, these assumed notions that the fine, fine people in the State Department very often had about Russia and the way the world works. Uh, they lost their reins during the Trump administration, basically. Did they get them back again? Is that what's going on here? Yeah, I think so. There's a lot of inertia going on. Um, and the, as you point out, U.S. Cyber Command, which is a combatant command, has capabilities. In addition to the two uh, reported attacks you mentioned, another one in 2018 um, hit the Iranian air defense system very well. Now, as it turns out, President Trump was in the process of scaling back a retaliation against Iran that would have actually exploited that disabling of Iran's system. But it does seem that the pencil necks, the pinstripe, guys at the State Department, President Trump called it the Deep State Department, might be in charge here and mm. might be trying to play a game that's too clever by half. By the way, I'm not too happy about that at all. I mean, a lot of people said he was a cowboy. Of course, they said the same thing about Ronald Reagan in the 1980s. Turned out he did a lot to end the, the Cold War, which uh, all the smart people in the State Department said could never be done. Uh, didn't you feel a little safer when they had less control in the State Department than they apparently do now? Absolutely. And, you know, Mike Pompeo, the, the second secretary of state under Trump, who was there for most of the administration, I think did things right. pretty well in the sense that he uh, surrounded himself by aides that he liked. He um, took the issues that were important to him and important to the president and managed them well and just sort of ignored yeah. the insane asylum that is the department. Christian, we, we only have 30 seconds. This deserves more time than that, but we literally have 30 seconds. Uh, the pullout from Afghanistan. If the Taliban do take over again, and there's a possibility they could, uh, is there any way we could go in like in December of 2001 and with a, with a couple of dozen uh, special forces guys and, and alerting people from the air to bomb people that we could take them out again if, if they take over? You know, I think we retain that capability because we did that without a lot of help and we scared a lot of people, the Chinese and the Russians, by showing that we can reach around the world. And within two months after 9-11, we had taken Kabul. The question is, of course, if you do it again, how do you keep it? Do you want to keep right. it? Uh, I think the lesson is here that, you know, we've been lied to for the better part of two decades about the capabilities of these Afghan forces, the deep state, the generals, the defense contractors who've said we're that close to getting this awesome capability in yeah. Iran. And, you know, excuse me, in Afghanistan. And Biden today talked up 300,000 troops that we've trained that just aren't that good. My son was there for a year and he says, I, I said, do you have regrets? He said, look, we killed bad guys. We got rid of a lot of evil when we were there. We can't be responsible for what happens when we're not there. So they, they should be That's proud. Right, yeah. Anybody who served in Afghanistan should yes. feel very proud for what they did while we were there. Christian, good to see you. Thank you very much. Appreciate Certainly. it.